hello thank you for tuning into my channel we're finally making the blocks for the pixel quilt so if you want to see how to turn your paper template into a block like this please stay tuned I'm really excited to be at this stage of the um, process I've actually at this point I've actually made two of my three sections as a reminder I'm turning this piece of um, street art that I found on the muralco.com into a quilt I have um, used graph paper to uh, lay out my pixels to see how where they're going to go in the quilt and I have X'd out all of the um, all the blocks that I've already done. So here you can see that the only thing I'm, I have left to do is this uh, last section. And at this point, now I finally feel like I can put the process on video. Now I think I finally almost got the process down um, so that I can explain it easily to you. This is... I've done the um, the first three rows of the third section and right now it looks like nothing because um, the main letter is yellow so we're getting ready to start putting that last letter C into the panels. Um, you can see that uh, I did use paper templates on this. I will make a separate video for uh, taking the paper off. And if you haven't watched the other videos in this series please go back and watch and you'll see from step one uh, how to get started on something like this. So right now, um, I'm working on the fourth row of this um, section. And I, I label them with letters. So this is the D row. And these are a few of the blocks here that I've created for this row. And I have my paper templates already made. And these are... I had to pull out all the, these are the other paper templates all of these are the ones that I need to finish for this row um, so the materials that we're going to need for this I have um, of course my paper templates I will need a rotary cutter um, for the actual process and then at the end I'm using a six and a half inch square ruler as well to um, to keep the line straight and then you're going to need your um, your fabric scraps, and I have a variety of scraps in here that I've been using. Uh, previously, they were right along here so that my surface was super messy, but um, for the sake of this video, I went ahead and, and moved them here. And I'm just going to pull out what I need ahead of time for the blocks so that as I teach, you're not looking at me rifle through um, scraps. But, you know, normally I have them here, and it's kind of... It's a little bit easier to reach right here and grab than to have to dig into a box. But in fairness, there are scraps all around me here on the floor as well because this is a, a process with a ton of scraps and that, that is what it is. Okay, I want to, um, to zoom in a little bit so that we can go over the process with a little more detail. So I'll do that. And I'll... In one of my previous videos, um, I did show how to make these paper templates because of the nature of this quilt each template is made individually so this is the current one that we're going to work on right now and I want to show you of course this is the the front side of the um, the template so this is where the fabric is going to be but we're actually going to be stitching on the back and so that's the case with all paper piecing the fabric will go here but we're going to stitch on this side and so that's why I have a, a marking line here on the back of the fabric as well I also have um, the location of the block here as well so this is block D 31 so when I get ready to, to uh, lay the quilts or the blocks out in order I will know exactly where to put this one and I made sure that I label them right side up You'll see that the block that I showed you previously, um, it has two pieces just like this block, but it actually, this is D29, and it's going to go this way, okay? So this block, the orientation will be a little bit different, but I have, um, 
I've labeled this right side up so I'll know which way to lay it uh, when I put it with the other blocks. Um, this section I've also labeled uh, the colors of each little um, part of the block. So here we have a smaller block that is dark purple and then the larger part of the block is dark yellow. I went ahead and pulled some fabric for this. Um, I'm not actually going to sew on camera, but I just want to show you how to place your, um, your fabric. So the fabric is going to be placed right sides together, but um, you want to make sure that it's bigger than the block. So everything needs to be bigger. Um, you can see if I lay this dark purple section over, and I'm going to lay it so that there's kind of a seam allowance there. And you can see that it fits over that whole part. Okay. And now I'm going to take the dark yellow. This uh, piece of fabric is, it's like something I got from a scrap bag. And so there are lots of, there are pieces already cut out of it. All right. But I'm just going to cut a fairly large piece. And just to be sure, I mean, it's much larger, but I want to make sure that it's going to cover and have a seam allowance. Now to get ready to stitch it, I'm going to place it here. And again, I'm not going to sew it on camera, but um, you want to make sure that you lower your stitch length. And I'm just going to hold it. You can pin it if you like, but I like to check it here and make sure that it's not going to um, that will have a decent seam allowance. I'll put it that way. So I'm going to stitch it along this seam and then I'll show you. I've gone ahead and stitched the, um, on that drawn line and, uh, it's right here. I did use a, a light gray thread, so it's pretty neutral. You probably can't see it on camera, but I did stitch there and now I'm just going to turn it back and do a nice finger press on it. Okay, and right now it just looks like a, a really strange piece of um, <laughs> piece of, of joined material. But here, if we look back, if we look on the back, we see that we're going to have a really good um, allowance around so that we'll be able to trim a, a fairly decent amount off. Okay, and this is basically the process that we'll use um, for each piece. But let me show you... Um, a piece, piece that's a little, a little bit more involved. It actually has four pieces of fabric that we're going to add to it. And what I wanted to make sure I did is you want to end with a seam that goes all the way across. So some kind of, usually some kind of diagonal seam that, um, that will be your last one. And I've actually labeled these pieces one, two, three, and four. Um, I labeled one as the white piece uh, because I don't want the seam allowance to go f um, behind it. So I'm going to lay down this, the white piece, and then the magenta piece. Um, and then I'll stitch on the line between these two. And I'll show you uh, what to do after that. So let me lay, go ahead and lay these down. So here is the white. And it doesn't really matter how I do it, but... I'm just making sure that I have a lot of um, seam allowance here. Okay. And there is some gray on here, but it's not a lot. And then once the seam allowance goes, it'll cover up. Hopefully the fabric will cover up that gray. All right. And here's my magenta piece. It is big enough to cover, hopefully, and have some seam allowance on both sides. I'm going to lay these right sides together. Check it and make sure that the seam allowance is going to be sufficient. I'm, I'm concerned about this, the red piece, so let me lay it back. Uh, actually, I'm going to grab another piece for that instead of using this one because I feel like it's too small. I need to make sure I have something that's going to give me enough seam allowance. So I'm just cutting another piece right here off camera so that I can make sure that it's big enough. And this process, it happens a lot because you just want to make sure that you have enough fabric. So this one I think is plenty large. And then when I 
I'm sure that when I fold it back, it'll cover up this whole area. All right, again, stitching on the back side, and then I'll show you. I have the first two pieces stitched together, and I've, um, let's see, I stitched it here on the back, and then I brought it to the front. I've pushed it back and then finger pressed it, and you can see that this is going to show mostly white now. It won't show the gray. Okay, from this point, I need to look at where my next piece is going to go. So I'm looking at my number three piece, which is here. And then the line between two and three is, um, it's right here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold back on that line. And I'm going to trim this part down to a quarter inch. And... Um, that's something that I didn't do a lot of at first, but I really feel like it helps um, when I need to put a new section on. It helps to already have a, um, a line that I'm going to, a, a quarter inch mark to lay my, um, my new fabric up against. I don't know if that made sense, but okay. All right, and so here we have it. And this is where the dark purple is going to go. I have it right here. You can see that it's going to cover. And then when I put it down, I already have, this is where I can uh, line up my fabric. Okay, again, stitching here on this line. And so then the next section is done. I've stitched here. And now I'm going to fold it back. Okay. I only have one more section to do, and that's the uh, medium yellow section. What I'm going to do now is turn uh, my paper over, turn my template over, and here you can see that's a pretty large section. I can go ahead and chop that off because I know it's not going to be in the way. Okay. All right, so from this point, I'm going to fold back. And sometimes it's exact. A lot of times it's not just because um, the front lines I do with the ruler. The back lines I just um, freehand. Okay, so I'm going to just there we go. chop that off. All right, and then I'm going to get ready to lay down the medium yellow. I'm using a much larger piece of fabric now. But I'm going to cut, I'll cut it so that you can see how I put it down. I just want to make sure, again, that it's big enough to cover the whole section of, um, of the paper so it, it hangs off. So here we go. You can see that's big enough. Yep. Yeah. All right, and then fold it here, and then when I... Turn it over, I have my stitch line. So I'll do that and then I'll show you the completed block. So the last seam is done. I'm going to flip the fabric back, give it a nice press. And one thing I do love about this process is before, you could see a lot of gray in this white section, but because it's such a small portion of the fabric, now it's gonna look white when we get it all done. So at this point I have two blocks and they they don't look like anything um and i'm gonna in just a few minutes i'm gonna cut these down but first i want to finish up all the blocks in this row then i'll show you that process i have each of the finished blocks um for my d row and now i'm going to take some time and show you how to cut them down um, it really doesn't matter what direction they face for this step i'm actually going to use my six and a half inch ruler because these um, blocks started out, the template started out at three inches. And so now I'm gonna cut that block down to three inches. I'm basically using the newspaper as a guide, but, um, but sometimes it doesn't exactly match. Okay, so I've already cut two sides of this down to the three inches. Now I'm gonna flip this 
180 degrees. And now I'm gonna put the three inch lines on the cut edge. I don't actually put them to the outside of the cut edge. I'm actually placing them on that cut edge. And so it won't exactly match up with the paper and I'm kind of okay with that. All right, so, and that's the end of the block. So um, again, if you take a look, this, um, this is right side up. The, um, the location is right side up. So this is the way the block is going to be um, facing in the, in the row when I put them all down. All right, so I'll do one more of these and then I'll show you the whole row. This is the second one that we did, that I did on camera, okay? And so here you see it looks very messy, it looks like nothing, and it's still gonna look like nothing until we put it in the row. But here we go. Again, using the ruler. Um, I'm basically using the paper template as a guide for where to put my three inch marks. Holding it down and then cutting on either side. I like this size ruler. I think that it's a great thing for this. I think if, if you could use a larger ruler if you wanted to, but I feel like that would make it a lot more cumbersome. So I like this six and a half inch ruler. Okay, and cut and cut. And then where before it looked very messy, now we have this. And again, still looks like nothing. We have no idea what it's gonna be or where it's gonna be in the quilt, but now it's all even. I'm gonna finish the rest of these and then I'll show you what they look like. Here's the next one. The blocks for this um, row, the D row, have all been squared up, they're here. And so now you can see they have four um, nice neat sides so that they can be easily stitched along with the other blocks in the row. I want to show you why your table can easily fill up when you are doing this process. If you look here, these are the scraps from squaring up these blocks. As you can see, some of them, like this one, are super tiny. And so you, won't, um, you wouldn't use those. But then there are other ones that are big enough to um, add to other blocks. So I can still use these as I'm making the blocks. Also in this section of the, um, of the quilt, these are the same colors that are going to be repeated over and over. So it could be important for you to leave them out or go ahead and think about it ahead of time before you start a project like this, what you're going to do with these scraps because you may need a pretty big something to store them as you dig through. And the more of these you do, the more, the bigger your pile is gonna be. Um, so at this point, I'm going to um, put these in order and go ahead and get ready to stitch them so I can add them to the parts that are already done. If you have any questions about this process, um, please leave them in the comments below. Thumbs up this video. Uh, again, if you haven't watched the other ones in the series, check them out so that you can get all caught up on how we're doing this. Um, and share this video with your friends and the series with your friends. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for when we sew these into a row. I'll see you next time. Bye!